person. You know, how do you live with a person who has good, but at the same time may have things that, you know, get on your nerves, things that may annoy you. That is what you're faced with. And that's when, you know, especially in the early days of marriage, a lot of people can't deal with. And that's why you find, subhanAllah, some marriages last a few months. You know, I've even heard of marriages that last, you know, a few weeks. Because the reality is, after the, you know, after the, the honeymoon is over, or as they say in Arabic, the, the, the honey month is over, is the reality is of living with another person. And you'll see the good and the bad. And that's what you have to put up with. So that's the responsibility, how you deal with your responsibilities. I won't go on too much longer, inshallah. The practically, once you've decided this, when you've kind of talked about the, you know, the practical steps, whether you're in a position to marry or not, and you decided, yes, I can do so, then you need to think about how you go about doing it. You know, how you actually go about getting married. The first of all, you don't think about the expenses. Reduce the expenses of marriage as much as possible. And inshallah, that is a marriage that will have the most blessing and barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The marriage that is, you know, has the least burden is the one that is most blessed by Allah. You know, many marriages, subhanAllah, people have spent thousands, you know, just, uh, just on hiring the hall or the venue. I've, I've heard uh, of a venue that costs 10,000 pounds just to hire. You know, subhanAllah, it's uh, incredible. Just to pay that amount of money, just to, just to call people together. So don't think about the expenses. Keep the expenses to a minimum. The mahar, first of all, I mentioned. And this is the right of the sisters. So sisters, be reasonable in what you demand for your mahar. Alhamdulillah, I think today it's not a big issue. It's not a big problem. It's not the sisters who demand a big mahar. In fact, it's the families. But the sisters have to make clear to their families that, hang on, this is my right, and I don't want something that is extravagant, or something that is unreasonable. You know, I've heard some, some families demanding 25,000 pounds. <laughs> Can you believe? 25,000 pounds, I think, subhanAllah, you know, I feel sorry for that sister. You know, which man is going to have 25,000 pounds to offer as mahar? And some people, they think, they consider mahar as kind of some form of security. That if you ask for a high mahar, it, it ensures that the marriage doesn't break down. In fact, sometimes the mahar, the high mahar, is a cause of the marriage breakdown. Because if, if you imagine a family that has burdened a brother to pay that much mahar, he goes into marriage with resentment. You know, resenting the family, they put this burden on me, is to take out a loan, and is to go into marriage with this debt. Or, you know, immediately he's got this grudge against the family. So, mahar, the minimum mahar is the one that is best. Secondly, the, the marriage cost. All you have to do is offer a walima. And that can be simple. If you want to invite people and give them, you know, dates and water, alhamdulillah, that is fine. Yes, if you want to invite them, just give them rice and one meat dish. Yes, that is fine. You don't have to think about hiring caterers or hiring an expensive venue. What is within your means? Yeah, if you're a student, you can afford to invite 50 people. That's fine. That's all you have to do. Don't think about big extravagant events which cause people you know, to be put off and also put undue burden on them financially. Very simple, brothers. I know you're probably thinking and thinking, oh, you know, it's just uh, talk. But, you know, unless you really put it into practice, uh, you know, no one can really, you know, I, I can't change the situation alone. And, you know, we want individually unless we uh, make collective effort to change for the better. So, in your own marriages, think about this. How do you go about finding the right person? That's uh, obviously very important. How are you going to marry somebody if you, don't find, if you haven't found somebody? How do you go about finding someone? The traditional networks, friends and family is ideal if you have people to help you in that regard. If you don't, you know, people that you know, married contacts, brothers and sisters who are married. And I think it's very, very important for married brothers and sisters that they try to help those who are unmarried. Because, you know, through your marriage, through your wife or through your husband, you know others. And you're in a position to help. And, you know, we should help our brothers and sisters. And that's why I, I, you know, I try as much as possible to help when I can and those brothers and sisters who kind of come to us for, for help and advice. And also that, uh, you know, whoever is in a position to help Muslims in this regard, they should try and do so because it is a form of enjoining the good. 
you know, promoting virtue in society. So, you know, those people who are in a position to help another brother or sister to get married, you know, it is a duty upon them to do so. And also, don't forget that when you are seeking marriage, the first source of help they should turn to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, your first source of help should be Allah, that you ask Allah sincerely to help you and to help, you know, to guide you to find the right person that will help you in your deen and dunya. And we know in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, you know, three people that Allah will help. Three people. And one of them he mentioned is someone who is looking to get married. You know, that's someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely help. So if you're sincere in your search, and you ask Allah's help and support, then Allah will, will help you inshaAllah ta'ala. Okay, I'm just going to come on to some of the realistic aspects of what you should look for in a person. Inshallah, and I'll give you time to kind of ask questions on you know, about these issues that have been raised. And some of you last know that, you know, what about university? You see someone you want to marry, you know, what do you do? Inshallah, I'll maybe touch on it uh, at the end. Realistically, when you are looking for someone, what should you look out for? What are the qualities and the characteristics? And everyone has their own preferences, no doubt. But in terms of what, what does Islam guide us? You know, what is Islamic guidance in what you should be looking for? Key thing, of course, is, is one's practice of Islam and also character. You know, these are two key factors, brothers and sisters. If you want a happy marriage, you want, you know, blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then put this right at the top. You know, right at the top of your kind of list of what you're looking for, this should be at the top. That someone has good practice of Islam and also has good character. Because through these two things, inshallah, uh, you'll ensure that, you know, your rights and responsibilities are kind of given. And many marriages, I know, you know, that are based on this, alhamdulillah, happy. You know, the, 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 people, the, the couple are happy, and you know, you, you see that they have a peaceful home, a happy home. But whereas, you know, people look for other things, you find, you, you, that's where you find the problems. So that's the two key things. When you're looking, the practice of deen, you know, how much does a practice, a brother or sister, look, practice in the religion of Islam? And this is an encouragement for those of you who are not, you know, maybe practicing, who are starting to practice, an encouragement not to get married, right? Not to get married, but to, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if you start practicing deen, you see so much change in your life, you know, so much blessing, so much happiness, so much peace, as a result of you coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And undoubtedly you will see this in your marriage as well. If you put this at the top of your list of priorities. So that's where you, know, you should be looking. And of course looks is important. It's important, but it's not the most important. You know, it shouldn't be the only single most important factor that uh, you consider. And sadly I think many brothers, more than sisters, you know, this is w- what their criteria is. Reality is, many brothers you ask, they will say, yes, I want to practice and sister. But when it comes down to it, you know, looks is more important for them, the practice of the deen. And, uh, and I know I say this from, again, uh, experience with dealing with brothers and sisters. So they say, we want to practice a sister, but the reality is they want a sister who is like, you know, in their eyes, beautiful, this and that, and, and so many other things. So looks has become really the key, the single most important factor. And that is making marriage difficult for many, many people. Because many brothers and sisters are very unrealistic in their expectations. Very unrealistic in their expectations. So when you look into marriage, really, you know, one key thing, have a very, very good look at your own self. You know, seriously. Have a very good look at your own self, what you're expecting, because what you're expecting is what is expected from you as well. You know, if you're thinking, you know, you want the most beautiful woman in the world, you know, look in the mirror and think, <laughs> think if you're the most, you know, most handsome person in the world. Seriously, so this is something that you have to be realistic about. Don't, you know, put criteria on yourself, brothers. You know, if you're looking to marry Hurul Ain, you know, you're not going to find them in this world. They're in, the, they're in Jannah. So be realistic about what you want uh, in, in a partner, in a person. And one of the major issues that uh, you know, people find in looking for someone is that they have, they have such unrealistic expectations of what they want. And looks is at the top of it. You know, they want someone so 
you know, so beautiful, so handsome, and you know, so such height, 